When over 2 million Guatemalans headed to the polls in April 2018 for their referendum, it was seen as a resounding success by their government and other campaigners. It was 26% of their registered voters, which to many hardly seems representative. But for those who were on the ground at that time, it certainly was. In 19, 1993, we have a, a, consult, a popular consultation process about reforming our constitution. And only 30 percent of the 13, yeah, one three, yeah, 13 percent votes, and that was enough to to reform our constitution. Pablo Hurtado is the executive secretary of ACS, a non-governmental think tank. In the last few months before the referendum date in Guatemala, ACS was one of the main groups campaigning for a yes vote. As you know, we had a 30, 30, 36 year uh, war, internal war, and um, our numbers on violence and insecurity and all that are not, uh, are not uh, good, good numbers. So uh, for us, it was a good example that uh, they are, the society in Guatemala are trying to change this and trying to solve the differences in the, in the proper way. The think tank also employs young researchers that have a very different perspective on this issue. We don't give that much of, a, of an importance to, to this matter. I think that we don't have this feeling that we need to um, solve anything with Belize. It's, I think, a more millennial thing that we don't, we don't get that pressure to... to um, solve a problem that we don't think exists. Actually, I think that most of people that of my age were against the, um, the consulta. Referendum. The referendum. They thought it was a lot of money spent in this um, referendum and that we had other areas where we needed to invest more money, like education, public health, and that it was not really that important. With all the time and resources these entities put in for a yes vote, what are their thoughts if Belize votes no? I think that would put uh, Guatemala in a very good position because it was shown to the international community that Guatemala is willing to, to solve it in the same way, in a good way. That will change the international image that has been held in so we don't want that, but that would put Guatemala in a very good perspective. The private sector was also a part of the Yes campaign in Guatemala. President of CACIF, Carlos Amador, spoke of finding a resolution. But how committed is Guatemala to respecting well, any potential ruling from the court? That decision has already been taken. Guatemala said yes. The, the thing is, Guatemala said, I will agree on the ruling of this court. If we go, if we agree upon going to this court, and if it goes this way or that way, well, it's going to be a final ruling and it will be recognized. So that question has already been asked, uh, answered. You say you insist a lot and you win. Our point of view is if you have this dispute settled, both parts should win. win. If you approach this, that this someone will lose and someone will win, that's not the, the spirit behind all that. Remember that the effort of both governments had been into getting to this point. Some eight months after their referendum, Guatemalans have shifted to holiday mode as Belizeans have back home. But they've already answered their question, a resounding yes to the ICJ, while for us, the referendum date is quickly approaching. Over the next few months, there will be many questions that Belizeans will want answered, like the burning question, what will Guatemala claim if we go to court? Perhaps answers like those can only be found here at Palacio Nacional in Guatemala City, where President Jimmy Morales is headquartered. The only sure answer we've gotten from Guatemalans is that they feel they've done their part. It's now up to Belizeans to decide come April 2019. I am Marleni Cuellar, reporting for News 5 from Guatemala City.